welcome to Project Home DIY. My name is Christine Guo, owner and curator of Project Home DIY and your monthly boxes. These are specially designed by myself as ideas in my head and this one especially came out of inspiration through seeing a couple things around the home decor space in herringbone material. Who has seen that pattern everywhere? So I knew I had to bring it to us in a project and be able to create something super fun and dynamic because you can either choose to make the tray or you can make an address plaque, a last name sign, an established by date sign. This can be a wall hanging, turn it sideways, turn the herringbone pieces sideways, make a mountain scene. The possibilities, not to mention color combinations are endless with this. And that is why I have said for a couple months now leading up to this project that I think this project might be out of 36 Project Home DIY projects. I think this one might take the cake. So let's get started on making this creation and you guys are going to blow us out of the water with what you make. But make sure that if you are brand new with us or even an old past subscriber and you haven't joined our VIP Facebook group on Facebook, join us. The link is at the bottom of the instructions. Scan that QR code or type in the link and join us there. I am very active in that group. I'll right alongside you see your projects, help you out, all sorts of stuff. It's an awesome place to be. I also post some VIP only projects every once in a while as well as everybody's favorite, the sneak peeks for the upcoming next projects. So make sure you join us and you will get to see everybody's amazing creations with these. And you're probably gonna wanna snag a second one of these in the store. But remember, if you're an active subscriber, you do get 25% off any of the store items. So make sure you take advantage of that discount. All right guys, let me flip this camera around and we will get started making our herringbone tray slash address plaque slash so many cool things. Let's get started. Let's get started with our herringbone project. So you'll have all your pieces <clears throat> and you need to decide how you're going to paint, stain, or finish them and what you're going to do. There are so many possibilities and especially the fact that we have the decoupage or the paper we can decoupage on. So many cool options. So the possibilities are endless. I'm really super excited for this. Um, I am going to create a stain with our Project Home paints. So I'm gonna use the bark and I'm gonna use a dash of uh, the black. Um, that will give me maybe a tad bit darker finish stain oh, I'm open this up. raven i'm going to add a tiny bit of raven to my water um and i'm going to use the paints to stain a couple reasons why they'll dry faster they finish faster um it will coat quicker and i can paint over them and sand down paint make it antique or i can do the decoupage paper over these pieces much faster if I use um, a paint-based stain that I'm gonna make. If you want to use an oil-based or water-based stain that you purchase on your own, totally fine. Just know that, give it a little bit more drying time, okay? So I'm gonna start with the whole outside box part. I don't need to do the inside, and I actually um, would recommend you don't do the inside if you are, um, going to secure the pieces down because stain doesn't accept glue that well. So it's not the best thing to use if you're gonna glue any surface is stain. Oil-based, makes sense. Okay, I have my paint jar. Um, might need a little bit more bark. Let's see what we got. I 
do want to make sure I make plenty of this in the first place because I don't want to have to add to it again and make try to recreate the color later on. Um, this should be plenty. Okay, there we go. This should be plenty of stain and color for this project, but I definitely don't want to have to remake it again or attempt to do the same color. That's the only problem with making your own stain. You won't be able to do it again. Unless you measure out, that would be way too, too organized. I would never measure. So mix it all up. Oh, that raven added a super dark. Guess we're going more gray. That's okay. I like gray. Okay, I'm just mixing up these colors. Okay, let me test it. Look at that raven like showing through a bit. That's pretty. Okay, I think we're good to go. I'm just going to paint this on and try not to make it look like a mess by the time I'm done. Okay, tray is painted, stained, faux stained. And I'm just looking over, making sure there's no weird spots or drips. If you've been around with me for a while, you know that I like to put these in the dryer heater to dry and kind of accelerate that drying time. So I'm gonna set that over there and you'll hear me turn that on as well. There's a slight hum. Okay, beautiful. It's already drying, which is awesome. Okay, now I'm gonna paint the little box that came with it. Okay, now I'm gonna do all the little wood pieces and I'm going to stain them all. It won't hurt no matter what colors we do to it. So just stain away. Back with the finished and um, <clears throat> stained pieces we are ready to decoupage and if you're going to paint you do feel that no matter what you put on the wood anytime you cover wood in any type of liquid you're going to pull up grain in the wood so just give it a quick sand over and when i say quick quick we're not stenciling over this so you don't have to um, do as well as when we stencil and just pay attention to how your, uh, how the herringbone pieces are laid out on the instructions. There's two triangles at the top, the two larger triangles, they are the same size. The two larger triangles at the top. There are three of the same size piece of wood down the side. These dudes go in the corner. This little triangle fills this piece. And then these three pieces progressively get larger. They're all three unique. Um, this has a corner piece. This is actually the same size as that second one. Uh, so it's pretty easy to lay out once you figure it out, but you can get the pieces mixed up. Give a quick sand over and we'll get to decoupaging.
Okay, sanded and I have my tray still put together in the right pieces or order. And this is important because when you're deciding what to do with each piece, um, just make sure that you coordinate with what patterns and colors you're going to do. There's so many options. I know. I'm sorry. I bombarded you with options. But you know what? The really cool cool thing about another cool thing about this project, it's double-sided. So not only can you make either the address plaque, you can double-side these boards. So we could completely flip this all the way over and put another design on the other side and you'd be able to switch it out between um, seasons or themes that you have going on or however you decide to do this which is so cool so i personally i'm gonna pick two um prints and decoupage them on and then the reverse side, I'm gonna flip over and I'm just gonna do something plain and simple <clears throat> with paints and just painting like every other piece. So, super excited about how versatile this is. Now I just have to pick the pieces that I'm going to decoupage. I like this every other thought. So like, doing, doing this, 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 and this. Okay, I know what I'm gonna do. I'm going to decide as we go. That's what we're gonna do. Final decision. So I'm gonna do one piece and then I'll work on the others at the same time. Ugh, this paper. I love it, but I hate it. Right? It's so nice to have to cover up our tables, but it's a pain right now. All right. So I love this gold and I love these, this other gold and blue and white. I love that. I love that. I love it. I like this too. Oh no. I'm sorry to give you so many choices, you guys. Okay. Anyways, we'll get started. Decoupaging, simple, easy. Take your paper that you're going to do. An X-Acto knife is really handy. Um, I never have one in the right place. I have 75,000 of them, but never in the right place. Cut out your paper that you're going to be using at about the right size. So just be mindful of making sure that these triangles don't get flipped. If this piece of wood gets flipped, it won't fit. But we're working on this side. So I'm going to glue that right on there. Do not worry about this being perfect right there, perfectly lined up. That is good. Don't worry about that. That's a good thing. Okay, so decoupaging. You're gluing paper on. That's all decoupaging is. I wouldn't use a ton of glue, like I already have too much. Um, and I just spread it with my fingers because the paper will wrinkle. If you use too much glue, the paper won't come out of that wrinkle and we don't want that wrinkle in there. Just make sure that you get nice and smooth around and for sure on the edges. Okay, so there's that. And then I'm gonna put the paper right over And I'm gonna set it face down for right now. And I'm gonna press, because that'll ensure that it is nice and flat. Okay, so there's one piece. And let's see, oh gosh. Maybe the blue over here. Okay, let's just do it. Let's just do it. This is the way I usually am with everything I do. Just do it, just do it. Okay, I'm gonna cut this piece. Again, X-Acto knife is super handy. Okay, there's my piece and it's gonna go that way. 
So here we go with the glue. I used too much last time. Try not to use as much. The really important part is the edges so it doesn't peel up. There's the blue piece. I'm going to set it down, face down. <clears throat> I'm gonna look at it really quick. Oh my gosh, it's beautiful. And look at that warm tone of wood. Okay, I'm gonna do this in white. Oh, I think I know what I'm gonna do. And then I'm gonna swap and do swip swap on sides. Okay, white, and my piece goes like this. This is my face. Keep the face up, because then you'll cut the shape right. <clears throat> Oops. Okay. Glue. Smear. It's so easy, you guys. And this makes such a big difference. All that scrapbook paper you have laying around, like... You can pick anything you want. If these aren't your colors, these golds and blues and warm, if they're not your colors, then go pick some other paper. And you can even print any sort of print you want off of online. If it begins to dry, paper won't stick. So don't let it dry. Just saying. The edges do not have to be perfectly lined up. V will fix those. Okay. Ta-da, this will be blue. Okay. Here's my blue, this is my face. I'm going to try to conserve my paper. Might need that triangle. Gotta work kind of fast. Okay, getting off my fingers so I don't get it on the top. place face it down and this is my yellow and this is my face up and I'm just gonna go right along here totally happy with those they look so good and they're gonna even look better here in a minute okay you should let those dry longer than what I'm doing right here but I know I put my glue nice and thin so I'm gonna start from the bottom up where I started on this piece. If you do have a um, heater <clears throat> that you use to dry things, set these in the heater and you'll feel the glue get nice and um, dried up. Right now I can feel the paper is just a little bit moist. If the paper is a little bit moist, you have a risk of tearing the paper when you sand. So just be careful. Um, that could happen if it happens it's not the end of the world but i will go ahead and try this you want to keep sanding in a downward motion only okay don't go back and forth sand in a downward motion only so then you're pulling off those little scraps of paper okay and that's how you get the perfect finish to this that's why i said don't worry about any overage pieces because we will fix it. And if you want more of a worn rustic look, keep sanding. And I actually like to get out my hand sander. Now I can go back and forth because I do feel that it is dry. But I actually like getting out my hand sander and sanding more around the edges. And then my wood shows through and it just looks awesome. Okay. There's piece number one. Let's try, oh, no. Let's try this guy. 
Again, if I get into too wet, I'm gonna have to stop. If it does tear, more than likely you can set it back down um, and it won't affect it too bad. If it tears too much, I would honestly just glue it back. You'll never even notice. Okay. Just took those little extra pieces right off the edge. Cleaned it up so perfectly. So pretty. Okay, next. I gotta be careful on this white paper that my hands don't get it dirty. It just came off. Just the cooler. Wait, what did I do wrong? Is that that one maybe? I think so. Oh, I scared myself. Like I messed up my plan. Okay, I'm gonna put the handles on. I'm still allowing those white pieces to dry. To do this, you'll just need a tape measure and a small head screwdriver. Measure center of your tray, which is going to be six inches. And make a mark at six inches. And then your little handle is about three and a half inches long. So two, or one and, okay, so it's three and a half inches long. I'm going to make a mark at one and three quarters. Okay, and just eyeball those. You may have to straighten your brackets just a tiny bit. Let's start with the screwdriver. The first one is gonna be the worst. I'm telling you right now, it's not gonna be fun to get it started. So I can see center line on my handle there. I feel like I would be much more stronger pushing in than pushing down. I'm gonna move it down here. Okay, there's one. We have four screws to go. Hey, it's not as bad as um, in July of like 2019, we sent out this 
jewelry rack. And there were so many little screws. This is much better than that. I'm sorry if you can't see right now. This would be really handy if I was left-handed. There it is. Okay. Put in the other two screws real quick. They actually went in really nicely. Okay, handles are on. Perfect. And next, I'm going to sand up these back the back side of these pieces and when I do this I do like to give them a good sand because I do like the antique finish going through so it'll take me a hot minute to do this so see how nice that comes through and especially because we stained the wood first so there's a little bit of dark grain coming through it's awesome Okay, sanding always creates such a mess. So, I wipe up the dust. Should be quite the puzzle to put back together here in a moment. I'm so excited to do so. And there's options. Like now that my piece is done, I have options of what I can do. Okay, so I know this is the bottom. And Let's see, I know this is a corner. Oh, um, I got some dust on these. I'll wipe them up a little. Okay, next. Wait, what am I doing? This piece, there we go. I'm gonna remember. Okay, hey, these pieces are meant to fit loosely also. They would, if they would constantly expands because of moisture. So if these pieces did fit super, super tight, you wouldn't be happy with me at all in a few weeks um, because they would expand and they would not fit. So they are supposed to be loose. There will be gaps. There's no other way around it. You would be really mad at me because you wouldn't be able to get anything in or out of there if there wasn't gaps. Oh my gosh. And ta-da. There it is. I do see I got some paint right there. Super forgiving. Sand it up. Look at that. Okay, let's try it with the other direction. Two. There's what it's gonna kinda look like. Herringbone print is so classic, like the most classic ever. It's just beautiful. Okay, so see, it's just the opposite back side and you just get to build it over again. That goes in there. You guys will like this if you're a little puzzle makers. There we go, not such a big, okay. So my recommendation is if you want to change it up, keep them floating so they are floaters and they can move around. Um, if you want to glue them down, I would do just like this, have the gaps loosely placed in there, and then honestly just take a dab of hot glue and glue in your piece and stick it in. Um, that way it'll stay. If you are doing the address plaque or an outdoor sign or a wall sign, it will hang on the wall without them falling out, but I would put them in permanently if you do hang it on the wall or do the address plaque. So speaking of our little 
bucket here. It's so cute. I didn't sand it up. Let me sand it up real quick. Okay, it can sit on our tray and you can have pens and pencils in it, paint brushes for my use. Um, you can set it on your ottoman or on a coffee table and this can hold your ever missing Amazon remote because it's so little. It'll fit right in there, all your TV remotes. Um, take it to your picnic, have your silverware sit in there. So many ideas. Or if you're doing the address plaque, can be down in the corner with some flowers, floral placed in there. Let me see what I have. Let's see, this is just stuff from Bird Box sitting there. Add that in over the edge, or we can do any sort of floral that you have. Just a few simple peonies. I'm digging everywhere for all of that. Checking, checking my stashes. There's peonies. Obviously, if you have it hanging on the wall, you won't have the handles, but so many options. I cannot wait to see your guys' creations. And if you're lucky, we will sell out of these because we don't have lots and lots of extras, but um, if you're lucky to be re-watching this video, check in our store, we may still have this project available. So there it is. Thanks for joining me. Join us next month for hmm, the Blooming Trio. We'll see you then, bye.